Now, for years, Uganda depended on a limited list of crops to earn, especially foreign currency. And this is tea, coffee, and cotton. Now, today, new crops are joining the list. And in these, we're saying grains. Today, we look at what space do grains occupy in Uganda and what is being done to ensure that the country optimizes benefits from these crops. Recent figures from the Uganda Grain Council show that Uganda produces approximately 4 million tons of maize annually. A bulk of these are consumed locally with Kenya, which is among the leading importers of Ugandan maize, taking about 600,000 tons. In terms of revenue, the subsector is also emerging as one of the major earners for the country, with most of the revenue coming in from neighboring countries. Last year, according to the Bank of Uganda, maize and beans exports alone fetched over 700 billion shillings with potential of even more growth. However, this fairly new income stream for the country is under threat from a myriad of challenges which are threatening to dampen its ability to generate more revenue for the country. As you are aware, Uganda in 20, early 2018, around Feb March, we lost a deal that we, Uganda had signed with the Kenyan government to supply 600 metric tons of 600,000 metric tons of grain to the National Cereal and Produce Board of Kenya. But this business didn't uh, happen just because of the challenge of aflatoxin that uh, I'm talking about, because much of the grains that were detected, that were tested, did not pass the test because it had more than 10 parts per billion of aflatoxin concentration. Part of the problem, according to experts, is related to the agro inputs. Today, Several initiatives are being adopted to push for the optimization of dividends from the grain subsector with critical focus on post-harvest handling and storage with the private sector sitting in the midst of all this. Uh, we have been trained in the fumigation because now we have, we do it ourselves. We also have uh, qualified fumigators who have certificates. We have been trained in grading which we do ourselves. Uh, and also, there is the, what we call uh, house inspection, which is always, always done by the East African Grain Council, which guides us to, to close the gaps of a good wellskeeper. This is being complemented with support from development partners. Some of the uh, more lucrative uh, enterprises, I would call them more medium than small. Yes, actually we work with the small, but we've also worked with medium players. Yes. We've worked and are still working with the critical platforms for the grain subsector in Uganda. And that relationship exposes us to all the major players from public and private sector, small and big. And in there we really sit and get an opportunity to assess what are the critical points where should we really analyze and see the critical uh, areas to intervene? Government is also playing a practical role in trying to rein in the challenges threatening the subsector, especially coming in from the area of research. Okay, from seed production, seed multiplication, and distribution. Now, with regard to distribution, government and NARO has in place, put in place a number of uh, measures. Uh, one, the main one from government, is having brought uh, the program of uh, OWC, Operation Wealth Creation, to assist the extension services or the extension agencies, NADS inclusive, to distribute uh, seed to farmers. It is also common knowledge today that agriculture or agribusiness generally is contending with risk-averse lenders that are not so keen on lending to the sector. But this issue is also being dealt with. I trust our partners in this, uh, in this business that we are doing. They have uh, uh, provided guarantee fund. It is used to bridge for clients for additional collateral. Clients who have limited collateral can always come because of that guarantee, they are able to get appropriate funding because of the uh, guarantee fund that ABI Trust uh, provided to Pride Micro. With. To the development partners, the farmer is the main point of attention. 
we will want to improve the income of the farmers who are involved in the cereal value chain, especially maize. That's the key one because our interest is really on the smallholder farmers. The second one is we want the agribusinesses who work with these farmers to make profits because the only way you can sustain that relationship between farmers and agribusiness is that if the agribusinesses are making profits, they should be able to pass some of the benefits to the farmers in form of technologies, in form of more income, paying a good price for that. But the ultimate one, eventually, for both of them is that we want Bichono to create and even So, for Uganda to make it in the so grain subsector, the there are many stakeholders that have to be on board there is and all pushing in the same direction, especially at this point in time when this sector is being touted as a low-hanging fruit for raking in more hard currency and at the same time plow back transformational impact in the farming communities.